lose, you're done. It's time. Break. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next installment of my Winformation series, where we kick off a three-part set of lectures I'm calling Winformation Tactics. Thus far, we've taken a look at some of the wins as individual games. In this video, we'll look at multiple clips from different games, just to see some examples that will illustrate the points I'm attempting to make. This video we're going to call, The Three Most Important Skills Needed to Win a PR Game. Positioning, First Contact, and Weapon Proficiency. These are the three most important skills, in my opinion, needed to win a PR game. In today's video, we'll be diving into positioning, and we'll look at first contact and weapon proficiency in future installments. Ow! You had no shit. When we talk about positioning, what we really mean is where you are in relation to everything else in the game. The objectives on the map, including the circle itself, the terrain or buildings that may provide cover to you and your enemies, the enemy or enemies themselves, and so on and so on. Positioning, in my opinion, is the most important part of a battle royale type game. And as such, we're going to examine this first, instead of talking about what the best weapon might be or what loadouts can get you the win. We will get to that, don't worry, that's for a future video in this three-part series that I'm calling Winformation Tactics 101. There are three things inherent to understanding if we are positioning correctly, movement, vision, and prediction. We'll break these down into their various parts and try and deconstruct the concepts to allow us to learn more about each as we go through this video. Movement itself is broken into three parts, circle movement, enemy movement, and looting movement. Moving into circle is all about finding the path of least resistance. You want to find a route that provides the optimum cover while getting you into circle without taking too long. But if you're faced with the decision of running a short route out in the open, or a longer route that takes you longer to reach the circle, but is safer and has more cover. I generally err on the side of caution and take the longer route. In a game mode that is entirely about surviving to the end of the very long match, then obviously the most important thing is not dying. A lot of players out there that people enjoy watching play like to play super aggressive, because it's way more entertaining to watch. But if your main objective is to win rather than getting kills, then you have to sometimes make decisions that force you to retreat or reroute from your original play. As we move into circle, we want to move with whatever cover we have around us. Sometimes that means running along a tree line or a death lane to get into a better position to cross a street or go through a wide open area of the map. Other times that might mean to run through or around a grouping of buildings or rocks so we can break lines of sight as we move to our ultimate destination. A good tip to remember is as the circle closes, the areas where the old circle is closest to the new circle close at a much slower pace than the areas where the two circles are further apart which gives us much more overall time to move from spot to spot without being forced by the gas into bad situations. Let's watch the end of this match together, paying close attention to my position. The last enemy and I have previously engaged on each other, and I downed him, but couldn't finish the kill because he had superior cover, and attempting to push would have put me in the open and left me exposed to other enemies. I hear the final two players getting into a firefight and use that opportunity to move into a better position with vaultable cover, giving myself more options. The added benefit of changing locations, other than providing more cover, is also withholding information from the enemy. In the final moments of the game, moving unpredictably will often become doubly important as it allows you to flank an enemy and creates uncertainty in the mind of the enemy. Enemy movement can also be thought of as having a few different components. Where the enemy is currently, where they are going in relation to the circle or objectives, and where you will be able to find them in the environment. You may think where they are going and where they will be is the same concept. And in a way it is, but you'll see what I mean as we get to explaining these ideas. As we gain experience in Warzone, we will begin to realize to maximize our chances of survival, we want to have as much information as we can about enemies or teams of enemies around us. What this means is we should try and achieve a general understanding, even if it's just basic cardinal directions, of where enemies or teams of enemies are in relation to us on the map. There are a number of ways to acquire that sort of information, and the ways in which you can gather that information changes depending on what part of the match you're currently in. Matches are broken into three stages, early, mid, and late game. Early game is the beginning of the match, the time between when you jump from plane, and when you've gotten a full loadout and you feel comfortable getting into engagements with enemies. We can begin gaining information on our enemies from the very beginning of the game. 
When you jump from the plane to start the game, you should always try to have an eye in the sky around you. Make sure to use your free look button when parachuting liberally, and try to at least get a count of how many players may be in your landing area. Also, try and get at least a rough idea of where the enemy may be trying to land. Another trick to remember while you're parachuting is you can still use your strafe buttons to go left and right and give the enemy a harder target to hit while you're parachuting in. The mid-game could be considered to be fairly self-explanatory. It's the middle of the game, the time where there's still a lot of enemies around, but the circle hasn't put too much pressure on the map. Usually it's between the second and the fourth circle. During the mid-game, you're mostly ready to get into a fight. You probably have armor, a weapon, and hopefully a good amount of cover so you can find and engage enemies in battle. During this stage of the game, we must use our eyes, ears, and intuition to gather info on the competition. Often, you can hear gunshots and sometimes even see enemy markers on the map or mini-map that let you know where gunshots are being fired. Buying and finding a UAV is particularly effective early in the game, as well as using a heartbeat monitor to let you see where enemies may be in your area of effect, also known as AOE. Late game would usually be after the fourth circle, in my opinion, when the circle is shrunk to the point where you can see from one side to the other without too much trouble. In this stage of the game, one of the easiest ways to see people is watching for tracers. You can get a good idea of where people are firing from and where they are firing towards as you watch the tracers move across the battlefield. Also, utilizing the other concepts we discussed is effective as well, but not as easy at this stage because most people have found weapons with silencers and have gotten their loadouts and equipped the ghost perk, so they are harder to find with UAVs as well as heartbeat monitors, and rarely show up on the minimap. Here we find ourselves in another final circle. Let's watch how I move and where I'm looking. At this point in the game, I'm quite certain I've cleared out the west and south portions of the map, so I need only look north and east for the most part. I use the walls as cover and I position in relation to where the circle will be moving, which I can watch on the minimap. Sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you get unlucky as far as circle is concerned. You can only deal the hand the game gives you, so you must react the best you can to the situations the game is presenting to you. Often, the circle will force you into a virtually unwinnable position. All we can do in such situations is hope for better luck in future matches. There are a number of things we can use to try and estimate where the enemies may be moving. Cover, objectives, other enemies, aka third parties, and the circle are just some of the things we can use to make guesses on where the enemies may be going. Looking for contract objectives, loadouts, or by finding the next circle and trying to imagine getting to that circle from the enemy's perspective are a few different ways we can estimate enemy movement. As enemies are forced to move due to the circle, they will usually take fairly predictable paths through the map. Once you've gotten a bit of experience yourself, you can start to imagine the path you might take from their position, and we can then use that information to predict the enemy may also be moving in the same manner. When we talk about the locations where the enemies will be, in this regard, we are referring to specifically where we should be focusing our attention in order to see the enemy or enemies within the environment. Some examples of this would be windows, behind trees, corners of buildings, and breaks and fences, small hole hostiles, behind rocks, and corners of rooms, as well as a multitude of other common hiding spots we should be watching as we move through the match. Looting movement refers to how we should move or position in relation to the loot tables and the locations that have equipment or weapons we will need to be ready to fight. Looting movement includes finding the right drop spot, knowing where our loadouts will most likely be delivered, and using that information of both the loot and the loadouts to gain an advantage on enemies. Determining our drop spot is determined by three desires. Our desire to be in circle or out of circle, our desire to be in or not be in conflict with other enemy players, and our desire to become equipped. What that means for the most part is picking somewhere there is a contract or more than one contract to pick up so you can acquire gear and money quickly, and a spot that doesn't have a high percent chance of fatality on our part, meaning there's not too many other enemies. If we don't collect enough money to buy our loadout, then the game delivers two free loadout drops at predetermined intervals during the course of the match. The first loadout drops when there is 13 seconds left before the gas reaches the second circle, so while the first circle is in the process of closing. The second loadout comes during the fifth circle, 45 seconds before it begins closing. Loadouts will drop in certain common locations around the map. Where they drop is usually determined by where we are on the map. Loadout drops tend to have multiple team boxes in the same area. This is designed to make it a high-risk, high-reward type decision to get your free loadout. 
you will often get into engagements over loadout boxes. So you want to always survey your surroundings before running into the open and trying to retrieve your loadout box. For this reason, it is often advantageous to retrieve your loadout from a supply station where you can purchase a drop for money. We can use the knowledge of how many loadout boxes drop with or in close proximity to our loadout to determine how many potential threats we may be up against. Small cues like this give us some more awareness on enemy or enemy movement. The tactic often used is to find a position with line of sight on the loadout boxes so you can ambush other players as they try to retrieve their loadout. We must always keep in mind, however, other players may also be attempting this same tactic. Let's move on to vision. Vision covers the mentality needed to spot enemies and find cover, as well as points of interest. Finding enemies is not as easy as it looks like. You have to develop an eye for motion, and be able to pick out small changes in the minor details and the various surfaces. Sometimes it's just knowing the map, which means having played long enough to spot common areas where you've seen enemies or been seen by enemies, and using that knowledge to find others. On top of that, it's the difficulty of actually finding their silhouette, since there are so many dang skins in this game. It's not something easily taught. It comes more from experience than anything. Although, I will say, watching others play, or even watching your own plays back, seem to help with this particular skill. Some objects make for better cover than others in Warzone. Trees are a double-edged sword. Although trees have a hard time being shot through, they offer very little in protection on the flanks. Rocks are similar to trees, but often give slightly better cover from the flanks as they have a wider silhouette. Rock outcrops or rock walls make excellent cover in certain situations, but don't offer cover from every direction. Houses are great cover for the most part because they offer multiple surfaces and walls, which provide cover from a full 360 degrees, which means bullets don't generally go all the way through houses. But if we're inside the house, we can still get shot through one or even two walls, depending on if this enemy has a good weapon and knows our location. Skyscrapers, or buildings, as found downtown areas of the map, offer full protection from almost every angle, but don't have very many places to hide. The third and final piece of positioning is prediction. Prediction is taking educated guesses on where the enemies may be going, or circle might be closing. In some cases, it's a more likely bet than others. For example, if you see enemies on the map or mini-map, and you know the next circle is closing on their current position, we can be fairly certain they will be moving towards the next circle. Thinking ahead requires map knowledge, experience, and a knack for getting into the mind of the enemy. Since we as players all have the same desire to survive and win, we can make valuable estimations on enemy routes and potential choke points where we may be able to ambush other players. Of course, as with most things in the game, if we can do it, so can others. So we must always remember we're not alone, and if we think we may know a great location to post up, that means the enemy may already be thinking of the same thing. Circle patterns are usually somewhat predictable. As you gain match experience, you'll notice you begin to see similar circle endings over and over. The algorithm that picks the final circle location, though random, is still often predictable. I've found it if the first circle intersects greatly with the map boundary, for example the middle of the circle is near the edge of the map, be it the mountains or the ocean, the final circle will often end right near or on the same boundary. We can use that knowledge for our own benefit by moving into the most advantageous position in that quadrant or area of the map, be it the high ground closest to the map edges, or the most defensible building near the center of the most recent circle we have knowledge of. Every game is different. Every circle is different. That being said, if you play enough, you begin to see the same tactically superior locations over and over. As we gain that experience, we should make decisions that lead us to those locations earlier than anyone else. As we get to the end of this match, we will conclude this video as well. As I said, this is part one of a three-part series I'm calling Information Tactics 101. We've briefly discussed and spent a small portion of time dedicated to the concept of positioning, focusing on the three skills we can use to improve our positioning, movement, vision, and prediction. I hope you have enjoyed this short lecture. Thanks for watching, good luck, good games, and have fun.